The new leader of the Conservative Party is Rishi Sunak. And tomorrow morning, he'll be installed as Britain's youngest Prime Minister in over two centuries. Mr Sunak is the first British Asian to become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. His victory was confirmed earlier this afternoon when his last remaining challenger, Penny Mordaunt, dropped out of the race just a few minutes before the nominations closed. Mr Sunak will be replacing Liz Truss just seven weeks after she defeated him in the previous contest. And he takes office at a time of deep economic trouble. Labour, the SNP, Lib Dems, other opposition parties all demanding an immediate general election so that voters can have their say. Well, first, let's join our political editor, Chris Mason, in Downing Street. Hugh, as you say, it is seven weeks ago today that Liz Truss was elected as Conservative leader, the day after she became Prime Minister. Today, Rishi Sunak was elected as Conservative leader. Tomorrow, he will become Prime Minister. Yes, as we've reflected in our conversations over the last couple of weeks, politics is on fast forward. It is only four days ago that Liz Truss resigned. And now, more change beckons. Today's new Conservative leader, this week's new Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak arrived at Conservative Party headquarters this afternoon, his party's third leader this year. Waves, smiles and handshakes done, he wanted to talk to the country, but didn't want to face questions from reporters. I'd like to pay tribute to Liz Truss for her dedicated public service to the country. She has led with dignity and grace through a time of great change and under exceptionally difficult circumstances, both at home and abroad. It is the greatest privilege of my life to be able to serve the party I love and give back to the country I owe so much to. The United Kingdom is a great country, but there is no doubt we face a profound economic challenge. We now need stability and unity, and I will make it my utmost priority to bring our party and our country together. I pledge that I will serve you with integrity and humility and I will work day in, day out to deliver for the British people. All weekend and into this morning, this woman, Penny Mordaunt, wanted to stand as well. She had until 2 o'clock this afternoon to find 100 supporters. In order to make sure the final decision was taken by Conservative Party members rather than being left to MPs. Just after one, her team reckoned they were just a few supporters short of the magic number. But with minutes to go, one of her biggest backers was having second thoughts. So here we are at, what, 1.30, half an hour to go, Penny Mordaunt's campaign grappling for every possible vote, and you've fled the ship. Yeah, I think there's plenty. I mean, there's 100 others, and I, I totally understand the legitimacy of arguing that the party membership should have the say. It's a difficult call, but I just think in the circumstances where division in the Conservative Party costs money, it increases the price of money, it puts interest rates up, the statesmanlike thing to do, I think, is to get together today. And I, Rishi and Penny will work together, can work together. I just think, why not do it now rather than wait three days? Half an hour later, an official announcement imminent and a statement from Penny Mordaunt. Our party is our membership, whether we are elected representatives, activists, fundraisers or supporters. We all have a stake in who our leader is. These are unprecedented times. Despite the compressed timetable for the leadership contest, it is clear that colleagues feel we need certainty today. They have taken this decision in good faith for the good of the country. Rishi has my full support. And she added, we all owe it to the country, to each other and to Rishi to unite and work together for the good of the nation. There is much work to be done. And a few minutes after that, confirmation of another new Prime Minister. I can confirm uh, that we have received one valid... <laughs> Thank you.
Rishi Sunak is therefore elected as leader of the Conservative Party. It's quite astonishing, isn't it, that uh, the guy who was defeated by the current Prime Minister is replacing her a matter of weeks after she took office. The Conservatives' rivals say it's time for a general election. They can't just keep doling out Prime Ministers uh, every month because they're in total chaos and they've lost control of the market and haven't got any ideas of how they're going to tackle the cost of living that people are facing. He's the second person in a row to be appointed as Prime Minister by Tories, not elected by the population. The idea that he can go two years before seeking or winning a democratic mandate, I think, is just uh, unthinkable. The challenges we face are so serious that we need the, the, the mandate that democracy is given by a general election. The Tory party have sidestepped that for today. This building has seen much down the centuries, the generations, and rather a bit in just the last few weeks, posing some sharp questions for those who govern us. What do you say to our viewer uh, who comes to the reasonable-minded conclusion that it's been a complete shambles? Well, no one, no one would want to see what we've seen over the last few months. Uh, it's been difficult, it's been painful. Uh, I've been dealing with my international counterparts with, with all the challenges going on uh, around the globe. And of course, what they want is they want the, the UK government, they want Britain to once again be the rock of stability. Because that they've they been laughing at us, haven't they? I mean, overseas, we've become a laughing stock. Well, look, what's going on? I mean, no one's going to defend what's gone on over the last few months. It's been painful, it's been brutal, but now it comes to an end. Autumn's second new Prime Minister, the third to call this place home this year. The era of Rishi Sunak, for however long it lasts, beckons. We'll talk to Chris again in just a moment, but let's underline one thing. Rishi Sunak is, as we saw, already Conservative leader. He's not yet Prime Minister. That happens in the morning. There'll be a final Cabinet meeting chaired by the outgoing Prime Minister, Liz Truss, at approximately 9am. And then following that, there will be a departing statement by Liz Truss outside number 10 at around a quarter past 10. And then we have Mr Sunak um, formally taking over after an audience with the King at Buckingham Palace. After that, he will make his way over to Downing Street and then on arrival at number 10, we think just after half past 11, there will be a statement by Mr Sunak there as he begins his term as Prime Minister. Let's go back to Chris uh, in Downing Street and think about the immediate priorities, Chris, for Mr Sunak when he goes in through that door tomorrow lunchtime. Yes, we're becoming rather familiar, aren't we, with the constitutional choreography of the handover of power from one Prime Minister to the next. The first moment for Rishi Sunak will be just a few yards behind me at the lectern, where we get a sense of him addressing the country and setting out his priorities as Prime Minister and the character that he will bring to government. Then it'll be behind the black door and the process of governing will be underway. And his first task will be shaping a new government. Now, he emphasises the need for stability for all of the obvious reasons, given what's happened in the last few weeks. But how does he illustrate that in those opening hours, whilst also putting something of his own stamp on the top table uh, around his cabinet? For instance, if he was to pick a new Home Secretary, he would have had three Home Secretaries in a week. To what extent is that stable? What about the crucial role of Chancellor? We've seen Jeremy Hunt in the last few days set out his vision uh, for how the economy might be stabilised after the next uh, after the last few weeks and how things might look at that crucial economic statement currently pencilled in for next Monday. Does he stick with Jeremy Hunt or does he shift to someone else? They are just two of the many, many posts he has to fill. Such a tricky balancing act for the new Prime Minister to get right.